The BMW 3 Series, or as we say in Germany, the Dreier. That full review is today on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas. This one here is a 330i with an M Sport package. And I will explain you why I've picked this vehicle here. And in general, you have asked me to review a 3 Series and some of you have discovered, hey, you don't have a 3 Series review on the channel. You know, several, not 4 Series, 2 Series, whatever. But this one here is basically the standard BMW, what the brand stands all for. And of course, we will want to discover that together with you as the all new generation. That will take some more time still. So this one will be still current for quite some time. And let's dig into details, exterior, interior, of course, the driving performance here in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So the BMW 3 Series exists since 1975 and Michelle and me were once at the BMW Museum and have, you know, have shown an evolution of 3 Series. Really good to check out this small review. It's very interesting. I recommend it. We will also link it right here. And then this one here, this current generation F30 or F31 for the Touring is the internal code. This one here exists since 2012 and the recent facelift was 2015. For example, new headlights, more horizontal and as we see it also here, optional full LED. And also we have a very interesting daytime running light LED signature. I really love those circle signature from the lights and a small cover here. And again, they of course bring you more light performance, but then again also if you go for the LED lights, more cost intensive. The M Sport package, you can also see something in the front already, you know, with the air intakes, for example, a lower bumper. So it has already a strong stance on the road, but that also accounts for a normal 3 Series BMW with the characteristic double kidney. 4 meter 62 or 15 foot 1 is the total length, a mid size sedan, as I said, also available as a touring for more, more versatility. This one here, the classic sedan style, if you prefer this look. Then a normal 3 Series in Germany, starting about 31,000 euros. This one here, of course, boosts the price, bigger engine, and also with the M Sport package. However, I picked this one because it's not the most expensive, yet already offers a pure sporty driving fun. I will explain you that later on. Here with the M Sport package, you got the M logo right there bigger wheels 16 to 19 inch are available this one here not the biggest it's 18 inch i think they already look quite fine i'm more this bright alloy wheel person here in the dark tone to add a little bit more aggressiveness tell me which person are you dark rims or, <laughs> or the bright rims rims then stronger side bumper and also the m sport package puts the car 10 millimeters lower for a little bit more sportiness even. Then this classic sedan shape right there. This is, you know, from the exterior, a rather timeless car and it has been basically all throughout the generations. In the rear also, so classic sedan style, very conservative. Those ones are, by the way, real exhaust pipes here for the 330i. And the modern part is, of course, then again, the LED daytime signature right there. This looks really pla um, plastic, not in the sense of, you know, plastic material, but uh, 3D-ish. The only thing I think with the next generation, they will also put the taillights more horizontal way that you don't have this step right there. Tell me, what do you think about the design of the current BMW 3 Series? So the car key, you close it with pressing the BMW logo, open it right there. Um, and you can also open the trunk alternative would be there just you know behind the logo so both is actually possible well it flips up automatically too and then of course sedan like you are limited in the opening right here so it would be more versatile with the touring but i mean it's standard for a mid-sized vehicle too bad you cannot flip the seats without going for an extra option which is not built in here 
costs extra that you can flip the seats in a, um, you know, also with a ski hatch included. There's a special package you can order. At least it is available. And then some more space right there. So there are so many engines available for the 3 Series. Let's start just shortly with the ones we don't see. Diesel engines are available with 4-cylinder 2-liter or 6-cylinder 3-liter and then in a range of 116 to 313 horsepower. And the petrol, well, it's approximately the same. 3-cylinder 1.5-liter, 4-cylinder 2-liter, which we see here, and 6-cylinder 3-liter. And overall, 136 until 326 horsepower. This one here, the 330i, 245 horsepower, also a four cylinder with two liter of displacement. The X drive, the all wheel drive, is uh, mostly optional available. This one here, also twin tower, twin power turbo. <laughs> and well, this engine here, I think it's quite interesting because it is actually. Not the biggest, not the strongest one, but already has a lot of power, that's for sure. And so I tried to find a compromise also between power and price. Of course, it's, you know, BMW is never cheap in, in that sense. But if you say you don't want to go all the way with the M5 because it's too harsh for everyday driving life and you know, also in maybe the V, uh, it's an inline, for, sorry, not the V engines here, the inline six, is maybe too expensive, for example, um, then this one here could actually be a good compromise. It has a lot of power, but still not the highest in price. Let's see how that plays out when driving the vehicle. Solid door handles and closing sound. And then ins and off the doors. It's quite soft here with a leather red surface and interesting fabric inside surface right here. This uh, special for the M Sport package. And also very durable. Leather red uh, soft surface also here from the armor. So a very good processing. Then we've got this bright aluminum look also for the M Sport package. And also M entry caps right there. As for the seats, those are very special right there. In general, in the US, for example, you get full leatherette in black and beige. So um, sensor tech it's called with the entry levels. Go for those if you are in the US or then fabric is standard in Germany. And then you have two sporty options. There is um, a normal sport line where you have cloth with red contrast. And this one here from the M Sport package this one then, here with fabric on the inside and also this blue durable surface, also very interesting from design. And then Alcantara on the outer parts with blue contour stitches. Such a beautiful work they have done with the seat. Really great and also in the comfort. And don't you think so? I mean, look at it. It also looks, let's say, a little bit vintage or classic. So the seat form itself also reminds me of, um, of past BMW 3 Series generations. Then in the M Sport package, you also get the M steering wheel. This is the sporty steering wheel and also looks sportier. So this is really, really a quite nice one. Then let's get inside. Standard sedan and you sit relatively low in a sporty seating position. As I said earlier, this one here 10 millimeters lower. You can get an electrical seat, which we have here. And you have so many different possibilities to put it up and down, forward. Uh, you can even electronically control the bolsters. So this one here is you know, maybe here also this from the electric motor. This is too strong and up the side bolsters. And for tall people, also very handy that you can lengthen the lower seating area. And I mean, why not just do it manually? It's pretty easy. The steering wheel can be adjusted also manually like this, different ways. And the button for the Heated steering wheel, such a great feature for winter times, is actually right here. Cockpit overview is not a very calm design. You see you have many different elements and uh, design lines. 
It looks somewhat outdated, but the elements for themselves are actually quite okay. The display is either 6.5 or here the bigger one, 8.8 .8 inch. Horizontal layout that it you know, doesn't come up all the way too much. A little bit softened up dashboard, then this bright aluminum look. It's just a surface, a surface cover in, um, in the M Sport package right there. This whole element is still for a CD player. Some really appreciate that it's still there. Some others say you could get rid of it. The, uh, the instruments here for the climate unit are still separated manually. So this is also basically old school. But again, some really appreciate that. Also for the seat heating right there. Soon more details to the infotainment screen. The steering wheel you've already seen. Very good to handle the M Sport steering wheel or the M steering wheel also with shifting pedals right there. Glove box has a standard size, not too much you could really fit in there. One USB port is right there and USB and Bluetooth connection is from standard equipment. Most of the other things you have to go optionally then, for example, the bigger screen and also the GPS. And the gauges, zoom modules, so that they are a mix basically of analog and digital. Most of it is, is already digital. So very interesting to see that too. And the automatic gearbox with the automatic shifting lever. Uh, there are also many other versions available of the 3 Series and also just rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive is optional. This one here, today, pure rear-wheel drive. The instruments, you can see when I turn off the car, they're completely gone. So you can see they are really all digital. And pretty funny stuff because, you know, those um, aluminum stuff and up behind the plastic glass. This is really 2D, but the rest inside is 3D. And interesting is also that the driving modes change it. For example, when I go to um, Eco Pro, it looks like this, more in a blue style. This is to help you save some fuel and also the visualization changes. The same in the sport mode, but in the other direction, I have a big digital speed and the RPMs are really huge. Same also in the sport plus mode where the traction control is a little bit drawn back. So this brings a lot of variety into your gauges world. So the map actually is very well to see. I love this visual display. It's not, you know, super satellite view, whatever, but you can really very well see what's going on. The main menu would be like this. You can also connect your phone either normal via Bluetooth or there's also the Bluetooth Apple CarPlay function available. So um, somehow, you know, not everyone is actually handling that yet. Here, here it is. BMW can do it, that you do not need to plug in the cable for the smartphone mirroring. Very interesting. Connect drive would be additional features like concierge services, amateur, I ain't using it, IU. And my vehicle, you can have different, um, all types of settings. And interesting is, for example, the sport displays. You could have some fun, um, you know, while driving when you turn the engine up, there they are. Then you can read the power and <laughs> Newton meter output, for example. And headroom, by the way, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, and that, uh, especially when the panoramic roof is not installed, leaves plenty of headroom. Then, let's take a look at some other room in the interior. Some storage space in the front, one USB port, then beverage holders, they're not adaptive. So, um, but I mean, they're at least in a position that they could also be a little bit higher, so no problem for that. Driving modes, you put like in here with this, switch soon more to that when we drive the car this is here for the infotainment turning and pressing standard one and some hotkeys for map for example and media then again this styling bright aluminum styling although it again it's not real aluminum the armrest fixedly attached and you can put your smartphone in here and hold it tight with this function we have then it gets connected to the car antenna and another usb port now the rear compartment. So, wow, it's, I mean, it's, it's also really sporty here. Um, it's still a rather classic bench in its um, you know, very rounded shape here. In the front, those, um, those back part of the seats, they are still the same for actually, you know, decades. It's really astonishing. Standard knee room in the front also for the mid-size segment. 
You can sit very well here also as a tall adult, especially when there's no panoramic roof optionally. And I mean, it is somewhat sporty, but somewhat also uh, comfortable. So um, can't complain too much about it. Those head restraints in the rear are quite funny. You can flip them up like this. And um, then you have also, you know, proper head restraint. But you can also flip them down and easily again, so um, that you have a better uh, view to the rear. And of course, my favorite feature is that they continued all the way with the, you know, a lot of microfiber use here and the special M Sport styling also for the rear passengers. So that fits well together. And some more beverage holders. They are adaptive here also for the rear passengers. And again, if you would have the ski hatch package, then you could also open the ski hatch here and also flip the seats. It's not possible here. And Isofix anchor points on both of the outside of the seats. Let's start the driving part with a four-cylinder engine, two liter of displacement, 245 horsepower. And the M Sport package, it's got a little bit lower, a little bit sportier, and you do feel that. Uh, we're also going to the sport mode because then you can better see this, the digital speed in the, digital, in, 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 in the central display. That's quite good. And so far, engine is really silent. 80 to 100. Well, that's it. So, of course, you don't have like a very sonorous six cylinder sound. You can't expect that. But it has really reasonable power. So, when you're in the sport mode, the gears are turned up higher and also shifted down earlier again. But there are also other driving modes. Eco Pro, for example, is more for the sailing or coasting effect, keeping the speed and just lift the throttle. And the car is rolling, rolling, rolling. So that can save you some fuel. However, if you then want to drive sport here, you go back to the sport mode again. One gear down. There's also a Sport Plus available where the the ESP, the stability controls drawn back, but we won't use that on public roads here. Steering wheel is really precise and direct. Good control. It's a little bit rainy still outside, so we can also test the sound insulation and it's for sure on a very good level. But if you compare other mid size segment vehicles, surely not the best result we had yet. So we had cars that are better insulated in that respect. This focus here of the 3 Series is for sure in the midsize segment on the sporty driving and you feel that it really feels already, especially with the M Sport package, like a sports car and hardly any roll from left to the right. It's not that stiff that it would be uncomfortable on suspension or so I think they found a very good setup right there. And also for city driving, I mean, for example, a true M version can be a little bit too harsh. But here, this one would be a good compromise still between everyday driving comfort for city and, you know, some autobahn, countryside road, but still have a little bit more sporty fun. Also, the seating position is, is really good from the sport seats we mentioned earlier not only from the surface, but also from, from the seating form. So it does fit me very well. Also good for tall people, also on the long-term run. So um, there was also a time where I was uh, commuting a little bit further, um, a lot of times along autobahn ways with a with the 3 Series Touring. And that was actually also quite comfortable. So it's really a good autobahn vehicle. And if you then think about do I really need a 5 Series to drive comfortable? No. It's, you know, with the mid-size segment for the normal cars or with the compact for the SUVs, you usually have, even for tall people, reached, let's say, this maximum level of comfort where anything above that, space or lengthwise, won't have such a big effect anymore. You know, to me, it does make a difference if I drive in a, in a small car or in a compact or mid-size car, that is still, you know, difference. But then above that, hardly any. 
of course for some compact cars and all also accounts but for me sometimes you know i feel that in a mid-size segment for the vehicles it's still you know a little bit more com comfort is added so inside the city what about the overview to the rear it's fairly good although we have the sedan you know you don't really see with the sedan where it is ending exactly that would be better with the touring with the estate but it's still quite good you know to, for, for the for the overview also you know the classic building style windows are quite upright to the view i mean also to the front this vehicle here also from the from the basic driving form is somewhat let's say standard in a way that it has been built for ages in, in this way and you definitely get what you expect you know what to expect and you also get this sporty driving feel that also inside the city when you do some lane change you always have some some fun you know it's a very natural driving feeling also steering wise so you don't have too much help of course you do have electronic help that's that's for sure but there are other vehicles that assist you a little bit further here they try to convey a certain pure sporty driving feeling still and so this vehicle also in in driving no matter if city or now getting a little bit faster again on the motorway it conveys a feeling of you know you know it it's nothing super spectacular it's just sporty it is good it is very good but nothing fancy in a way and you know some nowadays want to have very fancy cars you know and with a lot of, lot of modern technology inside and something special and this one here is rather also driving something special because it doesn't feel that different if you compare you know three series versions from the previous generation this one here is of course way more refined how it drives would be way faster than any vintage car you can check out the review from AJ and, and Michelle from the BMW 2002 spectacular vintage vehicle and well if we would have two doors here would come close you know to something now there's also two series today but you know what was is the two series today is you know the, the, the size dimensions have changed a little bit so now <laughs> the modern 3 series with so many modern fit features you can also enjoy of course here if we drive this straight we can also select then again the eco pro mode to save some fuel for example um, i did some tests before where i tried to consume as little fuel as possible also long-term run riding and i could actually achieve 6.5 liters on my kilometers which is, which is yeah, amazingly uh, little however if you drive a little bit faster and really push it consumption goes up so after this small part of driving i can also um, tell you again more about that now we're getting an acceleration again on the motorway what you can also do by the way also if you for example now in the normal comfort mode is using the shifting pedal which are very well executed and add again more to the sporty feeling together with a torque converter automatic gearbox so here for example in the comfort mode if you drive there you know you would need a kick down first when you hammer the throttle but then you can use the shifting pedal shift down eight speed well i was even in eight eight gear so and then you can for example you know shift down six even maybe even for five or fourth and you see the rpms go a little bit up whoa so much whoa some are seriously crashed there poor x3 well well they probably need a new x3 now and we already do have the review from the new x3 on the static one okay that was a little bit maybe a little bit too too black humor like you know but i mean they were all right so i hope someone laughed at least but i'm glad they are right and well if they want a new x3 you can check out the review already and uh, soon also we will drive the x3 and then we'll have all the full driving review too 
So back to our shifting bit, because I have to pay some attention that I don't do anything wrong there. So you can shift down manually, M4, then bam. Then you know, get even more boost from that engine. And we could also then compete with this Macan in front of us in golden color. Hmm. Interesting decision. <laughs> So, what is also interesting, not only from the, um, the performance-wise, this engine is surely enough for the 3 Series. The four-cylinder is, you know, not loud at all, but it could be a good, you know, something in between a very expensive one and the cheapest one. So, if you are searching for a good compromise. Here, by the way, a little bit wet road, but so good grip also with those tires and suspension. So you feel in control with this vehicle all the time. So this also, you know, you know, I think that one of the most crucial things about this car, you feel so much in control. Also, maybe you've seen there's this efficient dynamics um, display in the in lower part of the instruments. And the thing is, you know, people have been talking about mild hybrids and also Volvo has now, are we going all mild hybrids now? And BMW has been doing that for quite a long time. And that means when I'm letting the car roll now, I get the efficient dynamics uh, display now in like in this blue area towards the battery. And that means that the car battery is being refilled by that. And then you don't need the energy from the fuel for certain functions inside the vehicle. For example, lights and um, AC or some electronics inside the vehicle. And this is called mild, mild hybrid, that you have some form of recuperation for, you know, not for driving, but for the electronic, electronics in the vehicle, where you then, again, consume less fuel. So here, for example, when we did some acceleration test, we're now at eight liters on, of, on 100 kilometers. Um, this is maybe also a more realistic figure when you're driving a lot of city traffic. But I think it's good that we've seen that we could also achieve 6.5. So considering the size of the vehicle and the horsepower output of the engine and comparing it also with the competition, I think something in between 6.5 and 8 liters is fairly good, actually. Again, so kudos to that. I mean, in general, latest tests we did with BMW engines were quite good consumption-wise. Also, if you remember, driving the 5 Series, the new one, with the 6-cylinder diesel. And we're like, wow. I mean, we could... Didn't think we had like 4 point something? I think... Uh, you were there too, right? I think um, something close to 5 liters. So we were also um, uh, really, really surprised by that. Yeah. So obviously BMW is doing, uh, doing their homework consumption-wise. Here now again, consumption drops below 8 liters. So I think um, we could prove that this here, you know, the, still the 2 liter 4 cylinder with the M Sport package, you get a very sporty driving feeling, good slalom fun, good compromise between sporty driving fun and everyday comfort still. It's not the most expensive engine, it's not too much over the top. Yet again, you do have power when you need it. And at the same time, when you don't use it, then you can still keep the consumption low. Still decent size for driving inside the city. Good comfort also on the long-term run, suitable for tall people. So again, also if we you know, look from the interior-wise, it's not the most fancy car, not the most modern, not the most futuristic one. But this one is one of the vehicles where you can still say, you know, you know what to expect, you know what you get. This is still the real deal, as we say, from, from cars we know. This is also the reason why so many people still appreciate the BMW 3 Series, because it has this, you know, good conserva conservative layout. Some cars are really good because they are so progressive. This car is somewhat good because it is conservative and still relaying on those uh, very core issues. I hope I could give you somewhat a feeling for that. And so, 
even if we don't drive at the highest speeds uh, here, you know, also in, in, in city parts, just every corner is still fun with this vehicle. And now to our conclusion for today, BMW 3 Series, or as we say in Germany, Dreier BMW, because we often, you know, turn around, not BMW 3 Series, but Dreier BMW. Fun effect for sure. Exterior, timeless in design. The touring, of course, is more versatile. The interior, very well processed, good comfort, great seats, also great seat surface choices, that's for sure. It's not really a fancy interior. I mean, it's well processed, but maybe in some ways the other premium manufacturers are a little bit ahead interior-wise. Driving-wise, it's exactly what you expect, a great sporty BMW driving feeling. And that's also the reason why a lot of people go for exactly this vehicle to have this sporty driving feeling. And that's also the good compromise the M Sport package delivered for us today, also with a 330i. So a good compromise between sporty driving and still enough comfort. So an everyday fun vehicle, very conservative in many respects, but let's say in this way a good conservative way because people really know what they get and this is exactly what a lot of people still want. You know, no fuss, no super fancy stuff. It's just a pure BMW driving experience, which the 3 Series still stands for as incorporation of the brand. Thank you so much for watching Autogefühl. Give me your feedback on the 3 Series and of course tune in to more episodes.